Hello and welcome to our fourth uh, Mirepoix three course finisher home restaurant kits. Um, so for the first sort of five, 10 minutes of this video, I'm just gonna quickly explain what you're gonna need um, and what comes in the kit and how I've made it and why I've done it like that. Um, so feel free to skip ahead straight to the, the cooking part and the reheating part and the plating part. We'll put a little link at the bottom so you can figure out where in the video to go to. Um, but yeah, so first of all, I'm just gonna talk, talk through the equipment you're gonna need. Uh, so the first thing you need is a chef knife and a, uh, a chopping board. You're also going to need a couple of trays, uh, oven friendly trays, an oven friendly, uh, sorry, a frying pan and a, a pot to hold water. So we're not going to put anything in here apart from water. Um, if you've seen my previous videos, I do a lot of sort of bain marie, water bath style uh, stuff. Um, this is the best way to make one at home. So we're going to fill that with water and get that hob in a minute. Also going to need a few different containers. If you don't have any containers, yeah, you can just use some mugs or, or little bowls or anything like that you have at home. Uh, a bowl for mixing a salad, some form of uh, spoons, a uh, little flipper, um, and then finally some little sort of house staples, a good quality rapeseed oil. I talk about this quite a lot, I like to use rapeseed oil. Um, one, it gives a nice sort of background flavour, and two, it has a really good smoke point, so that means you can take it to the pan really hot without it burning. You're going to need a little knob of butter, um, that's for the pescatarian people, so if you're not doing the pescatarian, you're not going to need the knob of butter, and some good quality uh, sea salt. Okay, so I'm just going to quickly talk through the different elements we have in the starter. So you should have two uh, piping bags, um, obviously I'll put mine into bottles. So a white one, in here we've got a parsnip puree, so obviously we've got pickled parsnips on, the, on this dish, jasmine tea pickled parsnips. Um, we use a mandolin to cut that, so there's always going to be a little bit of trim. So instead of throwing that away, we've made a really creamy puree out of it. And that's going to be like the fatty element of the dish and also the creamy element to cool down a little bit of spice. In your piping bag, we've got a red gel. So what is this? This is a grapefruit gel. So it's going to be super sharp and that's going to cut through one, the creaminess of the parts in the puree, but also the fattiness of the salmon. Obviously salmon is quite an oily, fatty fish. So the salmon itself, uh, should have a nice little uh, block like this. So this has been marinated uh, for 24 hours in sort of various things, uh, be it fish sauce and soy sauce and the main sort of elements in that. Um, so obviously soy sauce is a salt element. So what does that do to me? It's gonna dry it up. It's gonna make the texture a lot firmer and obviously add a lot of umami flavor. Uh, then you should have a nice little piece of fish skin. Um, so this is like, I like to call it fish crackling. So what we've done here is we've again marinated the fish, uh, the skin of the fish uh, in a soy sauce, white pepper um, sort of mix and that's again for 24 hours and then it's dehydrated for a further 12 hours. Um, after that you end up with a sort of piece of skin that's almost sort of blacky and you can snap it rock hard. Um, that you know when it snaps it's ready to go, uh, then we drop it in the fryer and they puff up to make these nice little uh, crackling sheets. You're also going to have your parsnip um, your parsnip slices, so these are, these are the, the jasmine tea pickle um, parsnips, so this is going to add another layer of acidity but also parsnips quite creamy. Finally the, um, the salad, so in two separate sort of bags you're going to have the mix, so in here we've got more parsnip, coriander, Thai basil and spring onions and then the red chilli. Um, the reason I don't mix these uh, too early is that the red chilli has a tendency to leak out into the, the, um, the salad. And also you're going to have a little bit of dressing. So again, this is another layer of acidity. So as you can tell, there's a lot of different layers of acidity going on. So we're not going to use a lot of this. This is going to be really to moisten the salad up a little bit. Okay, so for your main course, uh, you should have one hoggett croquette. Uh, so this is the trim of the, the hoggett, sort of braids down um, for about five hours on the stove. Uh, and then the cooking look is just reduced to a thick glaze and folded through the meat um, and then we pan it. So it's going to be super rich. It's also got different la layers of uh, acidity coming through there. Uh, you should have the, the cauliflower stalks. So these have been pickled, uh, just a light pickle, um, a little bit of sugar going through that as well. Um, so these are obviously the, the, the sort of flowers, the leaves, sorry, that come around the, the cauliflower. A lot of people throw them away. Um, you shouldn't, they're great in salads. Uh, the great sort of flash fried and stir fries as well, and I like to pickle them. You're also going to have a sort of little box of different garnish items. So in here I've got little bits of bok choy and little bits of cauliflower, so it's going to be to uh, finish the plate with a little bit of uh, extra garnish. One bag of the fermented cauliflower puree. Uh, so for this we've done a sort of lacto ferment of cauliflower, 
Uh, what that means is we've just basically, we've sealed cauliflower with 2% salt uh, and then put it in a sort of um, a chamber, which keeps it at a constant temperature, constant humidity, and let it go off slightly uh, or ferment. And then we've got made a classic puree with cream and butter, just to ease down the tang of it, just a little bit. Then you'll have your dashi braised bok choy. Um, so in here, we've got a sort of very aromatic dashi, made with kombu, uh, different types of chilies, and dried mushrooms. And then we've just braised the, the bok choy in that liquor for, for quite a long time. You can tell that the, um, the color's slightly gone in the leaves, and that's just due to the braising uh, technique. And finally, the uh, sort of the master of this whole menu, as you were, this is the hogget leg. Um, so I'm quite excited to give you hogget. It's one of my favorite meats to eat. Um, and I'll tell you why. In, I love lamb, uh, but the flavor of lamb can sometimes be a little bit too fatty and not really, not really strong enough. Um, so hogget is an old lamb, and what that means is you have the flavor of mutton, but the texture of lamb, so it's the best of both worlds. Uh, but to take that one step further, this hogget has been dry aged for, um, for four weeks. Obviously dry aging is reducing the moisture content within the meat, intensifying the flavor. So you end up with a really sort of strong, almost gamey cut of, um, of hogget. Uh, but then what we've done is we've cured it for 30 hours in sort of a 50-50 salt and sugar, and then it's like a spice blend. So that's gonna intensify the flavor even more by drawing out the water and adding in the aromats. Uh, and then we've confied it uh, in duck fat and hay. So the hay, it's not gonna be a forefront flavor, but it adds a sort of a background sort of caramel flavor to, to the meat. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take everything out of the packaging, uh, except the fermented cauliflower puree, the bok choy, and the hogget. And for the pescatarians, they're not going to take out the aromatic uh, dashi with the kombu and the shimeji mushrooms in. Uh, just a quick note as well, um, if you see me using a piping bottle or um, a squeezy bottle, um, I've given you, I've given you uh, that in a piping bag. So it's exactly the same, do exactly the same, but I'm just using a, uh, a bottle. All right, so cool. Okay, so now that I've explained the different elements going on, um, we can make a start on the menu. So the first thing I'm going to do, uh, like I said before, is going to get the bain marie slash water bath, whatever you want to call it, ready to go. Um, the best way to do this, uh, fill it almost to the top, maybe two thirds with cold water, bring it to the boil super quickly, uh, and then turn it right down. So you don't want it to be simmering, you want it to be hovering around 65 degrees. Uh, so if you have a probe, um, use that to make sure you're around that temperature. If you don't, uh, you can do what I like to call the finger test. And this is, you want to be able to pop your finger in there for about a second before it becomes too hot. Um, we don't want it to be raging hot, Obviously, everything that's going to go in here is already cooked. So if you put the greens in a boiling pot of water for you know, even 30 seconds, they're going to lose their color and they're going to lose their texture. The same with the meat. You add the meat that's been cooked slowly for, for 12 hours in, in duck fat, it's going to firm up and it's going to be really tough and dry to eat. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to preheat the oven. Um, so the oven, we're really going to solely be using for the starter, for the salmon, and we're going to shock cook it. Um, so the best thing to do when you're shot cooking meat is to make sure you temper whatever you're going to cook. Uh, so this salmon now, it's been out of the fridge for about 15 to hot, like 15 minutes to 30 minutes. And we want it to be at room temperature. Um, the idea is that we're going to serve this salmon medium rare. So the only thing we want to do in the oven is brown the outside. But you know, there's nothing worse than when you get a steak, for instance. Uh, you order it rare, let's say the outside's nicely coloured, but the inside's fridge cold and that's because it hasn't been tempered. Uh, you should always cook meat from room temperature. So like I say, make sure your salmon is at room temperature before it goes in. Uh, and I'm gonna turn my temp right, the oven uh, up to max. So what we do is really shock cook the outside a bit and let the inside just sort of steam through gently. And then we'll get that perfect medium rare. Okay, so now that I have the bain marie heating up and the oven heating up, um, I'm gonna get the cauliflower, sorry, the parsnip puree in the water bath just to heat through. And we don't need this to be boiling hot, we just need to take the sort of fridge cool off out of it. Um, at this point, I'm also gonna drop the hogget and the, the fermented cauliflower puree in. That means when we finish the starter, we won't be waiting around for things to heat up, um, we'll be straight onto it. Uh, just make sure you don't put the bok choy in at this point as it will uh, lose its texture and its color. All right, so like I said before, you want to be able to put your finger in there for about a second. Uh, you aim for around 65 degrees. You don't want it any hotter because it will make the well it'll start to cook things. Um, so I'm going to pop in the the hogget, the cauliflower puree, and the parsnip puree just to heat through. 
Um, and at this point now we can start getting the salads ready uh, and then make sure the oven is hot. Okay, so like I said before, uh, the key to cooking fish is organisation. Um, as soon as you start cooking that fish, you've only got a limited or a finite amount of time before it's going to be done and then overdone. Um, so what I've got here is I've got my little bit of salad in a bowl, my chilli's ready to go, my dressing, and then on a separate tray I have my fish crackling, um, my jasmine pickled parsnips, also got my plate, uh, my gel, and my puree is obviously in the water bath, and the salmon is on a separate tray ready to go in the oven. So the oven's at temperature now, I'm going to pop it in, I've preheated 220, it's the max that this goes to, um, and then I'm going to just pop it in for about two minutes, sorry, one minute, check it, flip it, one more minute, check it, flip it, and then maybe one more minute, but we'll have a look. So like I said, hot oven, one, one minute to start with. Uh, now I'm just going to quickly dress the salad. Um, so what I'm going to put some of the sort of the dressing in here. We don't need too much of this as it's um, it's quite a strong flavour. So just keep adding a little bit until you're happy with the flavour. It's mainly to bind it. I'm also going to add some of the red chilies. So just keep adding and tasting, adding and tasting until you get to the right sort of balance. One more little one. And that's done. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put the puree on the plate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of do a zigzag pattern down the middle. Uh, feel free to get creative with it. Um, you don't want to have too much of it as it is going to be quite creamy. Uh, so just bear that in mind. Uh, but yeah, give it. you can give this a go as well. So like I said now, open her up, give it a little poke and then flip it. So what we're aiming for is the, the flesh to be falling apart um, on its sort of in, into sort of uh, segments. So first thing, the puree. Don't worry if you get a little bit of a mess like that. We're going to cover up with the fish next. The grapefruit. So again, this is super sharp. So I'm just going to put a couple dots in between the, um, the diagonal lines. So this one's a lot runnier than the other, so just be careful not to get it all out of the plate in one go. And a tiny bit more of this. Cool. Just check that fish again. So we're going to give it one more minute uh, on the same side. And then we're just going to let it rest through. So now I'm going to start thinking about getting the rest of the plate done. So with the jasmine tea pickles, I'm literally just going to pop them on. Make sure you've got them all sort of at the same size. I'm going to put them on the opposite sort of direction of the of the grooves. And then just fan it out so it's nice and even. Then we're going to hit it with the salad. So I'm not going to put too much of this salad on as it is mainly just there to add the freshness um, that sort of the coriander and the Thai basil is going to add. So I'm going to actually put it into my hands and then sort of gently form it into a bit of a round so it's going to stay together a little bit more. Take your fish slice, check your fish. Yes, this is perfect now, so I'm just going to take it out. If I put it down, I'll just quickly show you. So what you're looking for is when you gently press it, it just starts to push away. So it's the flakes start to come apart. I'm just going to take the, um, 
the darker meat off. You can keep that on, it's not a problem, but just for the photos and, and what have you, I think it looks a little bit better. And then you should be left with this sort of perfectly cooked, medium rare, just in between. You can just see it's just flaking. So then, lastly on the plate, or sorry, not lastly, I'm gonna add the salmon. Um, and because I quite like seeing those flakes, I'm just gonna push them down just a little bit in pairs. And that's just going to show off a little bit of that, that medium rare cooking. Gently place it on. And then, like I was saying, just fan it open just, just a fraction. And then lastly, I'm just going to place my uh, piece of uh, fish crackling on the top like this, to one side. Just so it's short, you can still see a little bit of the salmon uh, poking through, um, but then you can see the rest of the dish as well. And there you have it. Jasmine tea pickled parsnips, uh, cured salmon, Parsnip puree, grapefruit gel, and fish crackling. All right, so now that we've eaten our starter, the hogget and the puree, the uh, fermented cauliflower puree, should probably be in the water now for about 20, 25 minutes. So they'll be ready to go. Uh, there's a few more elements we need to heat up. Uh, we need to heat up the croquette and the, the bok choy. So I've just got the oven, um, just chalk cooled it down from what it was on before to 180. I'm gonna pop the croquette in there for five minutes just to heat through completely. So just pop that in, five minute timer and we'll check it afterwards. Cool, and now I'm just gonna drop the, the bok choy into the water with the rest of the little bits and bobs um, just to heat through as well. So while the croquette just finishes heating up, I'm just gonna start plating. Um, so the bok choy's been in the water now for three minutes um, and that'll be plenty enough to heat through, it's only, only small. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the fermented cauliflower puree out of the bag and into a um, into a container just so I can get it out onto the plate nice and easy. So I've got myself a container here and I'm just going to take it out, try and get rid of as most water as you can and then I'm going to pop it over the side of a chopping board and then to the back of the knife just push it back a little bit and then just take the top off and then straight into the container. So the best way to do is I like to fold them in half and then use your finger, a bit like a scissors, and push it down. Right then, as always, make sure the little bits of plastic go straight in the bin. So now that's out, I'm going to get the, the lamb out as well. Um, so they're, they're, they're in the sort of a lamb reduction, so a thick stew. Um, I'm not going to plate the sauce, but if you feel like you want to have the sauce on the plate, uh, feel free to. So again, I've just got a tray ready, and I'm just popping that out. There's also a thin layer of uh, cling film around the outside to help, help keep its shape. So you just want to make sure you take all of that off. So just like that, that's fine. And then lastly, the bok choy into a bowl like this. So we're not going to be using the dashi uh, now. So feel free just to chuck it, or you can keep it for future use. All right, so now that all the elements are ready to go, um, and the croquettes only got a minute left, we're gonna start plating. So I'm gonna put a little pile on one side of the plate, and then using the back of my palette knife, I'm just gonna scrape it to the other side. Something like that. And then you don't want to push too hard down, otherwise you're just going to scrape the whole thing. Uh, you just want to have a gentle pressure going down. Just flatten it off. You know, with a sort of a smear like that. Now, right, so I'm just going to get the bok choy out now onto the um, the same tray as the hogget, just to get rid of some of that excess uh, dashi. So I don't want that to go onto the plate and start running while I'm plating. Uh, and now I'm just going to check the the croquette. Um, 
So just grab some second. Obviously, the tray's going to be warm. So make sure you've got a heat proof mat to pop it on. Uh, now, the best way to, uh, to check if something's warm, uh, if you don't have a probe, is to put something in and just test it against a sensitive part of skin. You might have seen one of these before, um, sort of like an old fashioned probe. So I'm just going to place this into the middle, wait a few seconds, and then place it against some sort of sensitive skin. So the back of your hand, uh, the little sole of your, um, your cheek there, sorry, your lip there, is a good place to test it. Yeah, so that's nice and warm. Um, if you don't have one of these pair of tweezers or a small knife, works just as fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sort of stand for the Hobbit to rest against, just on the other side of the puree. So I'm going to use the bok choy for that. So I'm just going to scrunch them up just a little bit. So it gives something for the, the Hobbit just to rest against. And then, like I said, the hoggets just going to sit right in front of it. And then I've just placed the croquette next to the back chore on the back. So now that's all on, uh, we can start putting the, the little bits, the little final touches on. Um, so the pickled cauliflower stalks, just take a little spoonful and then you can just dot them around. So it's going to cut through some of the, um, the fattiness. It's going to add a nice little sweetness to the dish as well. So I'm just going to probably put about three, three little spoons around the place. And then finally, uh, we can garnish it with the little, little bits of garnish we got. So I've got here um, some of the little florets and a little bit of uh, uh, bok choy as well. Yeah, and once you're happy, just take a step back. Have a little final look over, and there you have it. Comfy cured leg of hogget, fermented cauliflower puree, hogget croquette, braised bok choy, and fermented, uh, sorry, pickled cauliflower stalks. Okay, so for the hake, um, like we did with the salmon, we want to make sure that it's at room temperature. Um, secondly, we want to make sure that the skin and all sides of the fish are as dry as possible. Um, so while it's coming up to temperature, uh, just keep changing a bit of kitchen roll or blue roll underneath it just to make sure there is no moisture uh, left on the outside of the fish. Uh, for this, we're going to want to preheat the oven to 200 degrees. Um, so the idea with cooking the fish is we're going to start it in the pan, get the skin nice and crispy, uh, flip it over, add the knob of butter, baste it a couple of times and then put it in the, the oven just to finish cooking and then rest while we plate the rest of it. Uh, we're also going to need that bain marie again um, and that's going to be to heat up the aromatic broth and the braised bok choy. Okay so my hake is at room temperature, uh, my pot of water is at perfectly around 65 degrees, do the finger test, one second, yeah that's hot. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is, uh, drop these in. So this is the, the braised bok choy and the aromatic dashi. Uh, I've also got this pan heating up. So I'm going to put it on eight out of uh, eight out of nine. Uh, bear with me; every hob's going to be different, but it's pretty much almost at max. Uh, so we're going to let this get nice and warm, uh, and then we're going to get the oil, pop the oil in, get the fish in, skin side down, colour that side, uh, and then flip it, put the butter in. Basty, basty, and then into the preheated oven at 200 degrees. Okay, so now that the pan's nice and warm, I'm gonna get my good quality rapeseed oil. Um, if you don't have rapeseed oil, use a veg oil or a sunflower oil. Try to stay away from olive oil because they will smoke in a hot pan. I'm gonna put a decent glug in the pan. Um, I'm gonna let that heat up. So while that's heating up, 
I'm just going to season the skin of the fish, not too heavily, um, but you know, a good amount just to help it crisp up. So now that pan's hot, you can see the oil's moving around by itself. I'm going to put the fish in away from me, and then I'm just going to gently hold the fish down. I'm not pushing, I'm just gently holding it. If I'm pushing it, I'm going to be pushing out the moisture that's in the fish, um, and it's going to make it drier. You'll feel the fish sort of loosen up again. Uh, and that means that the skin has, uh, yeah, so it's not going to start curling. If you don't push it down, you're going to end up with a skin that's going to be bowed like that. Now that now I'm happy with that, I'm going to season the back of the fish. Again, just a little bit of salt. And now it's important just to keep turning, just lifting the fish up by the corner and popping it down. That's going to make sure that the oil is getting all the way into the middle of the fish, the middle of the skin's fish. That will help help get us a nice even sort of caramelization. If you're a bit worried about using your fingers because it's going to splat, just use the back of your palette knife uh, or your burger flip or whatever you have, or even a spoon, uh, that will work as well. And just keep gently pushing it down to make sure the fish is all colouring. Okay, so the fish will be in the pan for about a minute now. Uh, and I'll just keep checking it. Just turn it over, you see that you get a nice golden colour, not too much. But it's just nice and golden, you can feel that's crispy. So what I'm going to do now, is I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to add the butter in. I've also I've turned down the pan to stick, so it's about half now. So flip it over, straight in with your knob of butter. Butter's going to cool down the pan quite instantly. And then just keep moving it around, moving it around. You get a nice foam in butter. At this point, baste, baste, baste. Now if you're feeling like you want to do it, you can carry on cooking it in the pan for the whole way. Uh, but I'm going to put it in the oven uh, just because it's going to make it a lot easier for you guys. So just get nice and foamy butter and then straight into the preheated oven at 200 degrees. Yeah, so the fish doesn't take long to cook. I'm going to put a two minute timer on, check it, and then probably just let it rest while we carry on plating. So while that's going, it gives me some time to get over here, get my, um, get my setup ready, ready for the plate. Okay, so that two minute timer's gone off, so I'm just going to check it. Um, obviously be careful the handle of the pan is going to be very hot. Then I'm just looking to see if it gives. So I'll just take this out and show you a bit better. So flip the fish over is the easiest way. And then you want to push your finger in. And you can just feel the flakes starting to open up. So that means the fish is cooked the whole way through. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop it back in there. But turn it off and leave the door slightly ajar. Uh, and that's just going to let it rest through. So just like you treat a steak of beef. A big cut of beef, treat your fish the same. So just turn it off, I'm leaving the door just ajar. Now at this point, now I'm going to go get the greens and the mushrooms out of the water and we can start dressing. All right, so I've just got my, um, my dashi and my braised bok choy out. I've got a bowl ready. I'm just going to open them both up into, into the bowl. Make sure you get rid of little, little bits of plastic straight away. They have a tendency to find their way into the food. So yeah, this first one, the dash here that this is braised in, uh, it can mix with the other one, uh, so don't worry about trying to keep it separate, but if you want to, uh, obviously feel free to. Let's just get the bok choy out, and then we'll get the samaji mushrooms and the kombu out. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do on the plate, you're going to get the bok choy in a sort of little circle around the inside. This is going to make a well for the fish to sit on. Next, I'm going to get some of that kombu out, place it in the middle, and then there's some magic mushrooms just sort of round the outside of the dish as well. Don't feel like you need to use all of them. Uh, when it comes to presentation, sometimes less is more. So that fish is going to be ready now. Again, remember, hot handle. Just 
check to make sure your skin's crispy. Absolutely beautiful. And then we get a fish slice. And I'm going to just pop the fish sort of along in the middle of the bowl. Side. Lastly, I'm going to get my gnocchi mushrooms, crispy Szechuan gnocchi mushrooms. I'm just going to place them around the outside. A couple more of the samajis. Little bit of the kombu in the top. Dress with the spring onions. And then we can take our mix of onion seeds and Korean chili flakes. Now I'm just going crazy with them. So there you have it. Braised bok choy, aromatic broth, um, which you can put into a sauce jar and pour in. Uh, shimeji mushrooms, crispy and gnocchi mushrooms, and a beautiful bit of corner shake. Okay, so for your dessert, as ever, we're trying to keep it as easy as possible. Um, yeah, so you've got carrot cake. Uh, on top of the carrot cake, you have your mojito gel, um, jam, sort of as it were. Classic uh, cream cheese frosting, uh, and then your, your lime meringue shards. Um, so that's going to add to sort of your final level of acidity. Obviously, the mojito jam's got acidity going for it as well. Um, yeah, so this is, like I said, really simple. Um, you can use a palette knife, uh, you can use your fingers, whatever you fancy. I'm just literally going to put it straight on the plate. Um, it's literally, yeah, it's as easy, it's as easy as that. And there you have it. Super moist carrot cake, mojito jam, uh, cream cheese frosting and meringue shards. Enjoy it.